Hello, and welcome to the Skift Airline Weekly Lounge. I'm Madhuni Krishnan, editor of Skift Airline Weekly. In this episode, recorded at the IATA Annual General Meeting in Seoul in June, I talked to Christine Umir Widener, who steps down as CEO of Flybe in July. She reflects on her tumultuous two years at the helm of Flybe, its sale to Virgin Atlantic, and on the challenges of being one of the few female CEOs in the airline industry. Please feel free to drop me a line if you want to comment on this interview at mu at skiff.com. And for more insights into the airline industry, go to airlineweekly.com slash subscribe. See you next week. Hello, I'm with Christine Umir Widener, the outgoing CEO of British carrier Flybe. And um, we're here at the IATA annual general meeting in Seoul. And I had a few moments to catch up with her to ask her about her tenure at uh, Flybe. Now that I believe you're you're set to leave the company in July. Yes, I, uh, we announced this week that uh, I will step down on the 15th of July. Uh, the time also to organize a, a smooth handover to my successor and uh, just to prepare everything for the next steps for Flybe. Great. And so in the two years, right? It's been about two years. A little more than two years. I joined Flybe January 17, mm-hmm. and we are now in June 19. So uh, it will be like, yeah, two years and a half. Okay. So in that time, I mean, the, the, that your airline has gone through a lot of change and now <laughs> is being bought by Connect, correct? A consortium of Virgin Atlantic and some investors, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, can you just reflect on your... <laughs> Your two and a half years at Flybe. I must say that it has been uh, two years and a half and a uh, little bit like a roller coaster <laughs> because uh, many, many changes. And um, when I joined Flybe in January 17, uh, my predecessor was uh, already gone uh, and uh, the chairman uh, became executive chairman for a while. So he knew very well the business. So I started, uh, you know, right, you know, uh, with a, a strategy it was a little bit you know uh, at a high level so and I had to move to uh, uh, working on a strategy with a very detailed plan and the strategy was confirmed quite uh, simple to understand why it was to reduce the fleet because we had too many aircraft Mm -hmm. and not right type of aircraft Mm -hmm. so uh, we confirmed a little bit later in the year that the backbone of our fleet should be the Q400 Bombardier 78 seater quite uh, the good model for our network that is mainly domestic Mm -hmm. and close Europe Uh, our average uh, flight time is 55 minutes so it's definitely the right aircraft and it's uh, most of the time about frequencies more than you know distance so it's a different business model than long haul airline mm-hmm. uh, but it's definitely a short haul high frequency we can do uh, quite uh, we have a turn around, turn around of 25 minutes and uh, our aircraft are doing four five or six, six sectors per day so um, and uh, the airline is uh, you know today an airline of 74 uh, aircraft mainly Q400 we also have jets Embraer so 175 and 195 but the 195 as uh, scheduled uh, will leave the fleet this year uh, and that's uh, what uh, well, the best outcome because is we always said that this aircraft is not the right one for our business right. model. So uh, finally, it's happening. Right. No. Well, well, you know, it's been two years, and the, a lot, as you said, a lot has changed, and you've realigned the strategy and and the fleet of the air, airline. Um, so when you look back, what are what what are you proudest of in your two and a half years as top of? I think that uh, what I'm very proud of is that we saved the company because uh, the last few months have been quite uh, challenging um, and it was uh, mainly the the root cause and the reason why we were in difficulty was uh, not only based on legacy decision that impacted us uh, last year, but also the market Mm -hmm. change, uh, consumer demand uh, talking about Brexit, right, of course, yeah. <laughs> the pound weakness, uh, the fuel uh, uh, cost, um, and also some uh, carbon emission costs. So everything like perfect storm uh, hit uh, our UK industry uh, 
our colleagues of Fly BMI uh, uh, had to stop operation mm. uh, early on in the year, um, and uh, so that was a very tough, uh, you know, situation. Uh, Flybe didn't have any problem of cash. Uh, we had problem of liquidity mm. uh, because our credit card acquirers decided uh, to um, retain all the cash uh, and uh, restricted cash, meaning that we could not access the cash we had in right. the bank. So it was a very tough uh, and challenging uh, number of months. So we had we are very proud because Flybe is still flying, providing to the UK a vital infrastructure because when you look at the geography of the UK, the UK is a big island mm -hmm. and uh, not only uh, one big island but also surrounded by small islands and communities that are connected to uh, other regions uh, and the only way for them to be connected is Flybe. The rail and the road or even the ferry are not appropriate uh, uh, connectivity for them. So we are providing to the UK this uh, connectivity that is vital and uh, we are still there and our future is now definitely even more secure than it was. So we save employ uh, 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 employment, so 2,500 2, jobs and also pensions because okay. uh, 1,400 uh, pensions. So it's, uh, that's what I'm most proud of. Great. And what do you wish you had more time to do? Well, I think that when you're eating a perfect storm and uh, suddenly uh, uh, you have uncontrollable events that are impacting your performance, uh, you always wish to have more time right. to finish and to deploy the strategy. But that's uh, it was different. So I think that uh, I'm a kind of person very positive and I think that if it was what happened, we try to manage it and uh, it's always difficult to, uh, you can always go with insight and say what could have been different. But I think with the information we had and with uh, the facts and the numbers that were, you know, uh, available to us, uh, we did the right thing and we did the right thing at the right time. Great. Um, and just sort of, sort of a final question. You are one of a very, very small handful of women CEOs in this industry, in the airline industry. Why do you think it's so difficult for the airlines to attract top talent, top women talent, and retain top women tra talent? Uh, I think that um, aviation in general has difficulty to attract talents, mm -hmm. and uh, we need to be seen as an industry that is a bit more uh, trendy or attractive for young talent. Generally, we have three children, and... Uh, None of the three have any intention to uh, work in the aviation industry, and I've tried hard to mm -hmm. convince <laughs> them. Um, and they could have a career in the industry, but decided to go in other industries. So there is something that the aviation industry needs to do better in attracting generic talents. In addition to that, um, this industry has uh, quite a number of uh, big career paths uh, that are really close to the STEM Mm -hmm. uh, type of studies being engineering, being pilots, and this pipeline of talents are a quite low percentage of a female pilot or female engineer. So it's adding to the difficulty that uh, we would like to see more women in the, in this, um, let's say, uh, career. Uh, and we need to convince and make sure the perception that uh, we don't see much uh, female pilot, etc. We need to change this perception. So I think it's not only a, a, an airline aviation problem generally to see more, you know, uh, girls and women in uh, uh, these industries that are requiring uh, to uh, study mathematics and physics mm -hmm. and uh, to convince uh, their parents too that it's a great career for them because our pilot, for instance, uh, it's less than 10%. Uh, we are very lucky in Flybe. We have 7% of yeah. of uh, women, female pilot, but uh, the average is around 5 oh. uh, worldwide. So it's very low. And uh, we think it's possible to change that. But um, you need from a young age to convince girls and their parents that it's a great career for them. It's great even if you want to uh, uh, have a family because you, you can organize uh, your life. Uh, because you will have roster, so mm -hmm. you can definitely uh, organize your life 
around a, a, a pilot career for for a woman, for instance. So, uh, so that's one. And the second one is that um, I think that we travel a lot in the aviation industry. So it's twenty four seven. And uh, see of an airline, you can never, never forget your phone, right. and it's a big an obsession, and you can never switch off. So it's quite, uh, you know, the, the the number of hours you need to spend in the job is quite uh, uh, at a, at a very high level. But same time, when you see you in any organization, you need to spend this time and this passion to be successful. So that should not be a difference. So I think so. The pipeline of talent is. Uh, is smaller. Uh, that's one explanation. After that, we can do things to change it. Mm -hmm. We can mentor, we can coach, we can support, we can make sure it's more visible and make sure also we are celebrating each improvement at the right level. Great. And you have many more years in your career, but in this regard, in terms of uh, women in airline and aviation, um, in airlines and aviation, what would you like to see change by the time you retire? By the time I retire, I think I would like to be surrounded by many other uh, female airline CEO. <laughs> Not uh, to be only the only woman in right. the room when we are talking about uh, technical subject or or when uh, I'm attending the board of governors. Uh, so we are two women at the board of governors of IATA, right. me and the lady uh, CEO of uh, Air Europa. Mm -hmm. I will step down so she will be on her own. And uh, I think that we should uh, represent the diversity of our world because... Uh, but if I could interrupt yes. for a minute, and two women in the Board of Governors was a record, right? Absolutely. <laughs> we go back to one. <laughs> and uh, so I think we, it, the aviation and what's saying, uh, you know, Alexandre Gignac, aviation is a business of freedom. Uh, but if we want to represent the world, our customers, uh, also the new generation, we see to be we need to have and see more diversity at the top level and everywhere in this industry. So I would like to see that happening before I retire. And I have no intention to retire too old. <laughs> so I would like to see that happening as soon as possible because we can do it if it's becoming a priority because it's not yet a priority. If it's really high on the agenda, we can see that happening sooner than we think. Well, great, Christina. Thank you very much for joining us no, today. No, my pleasure.